Vital Vital Podcast. Lift off and the clock has started. Bang, 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 we back. No Invite Podcast, episode 40? <laughs> All right, so look, I did research, but I, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm a stunner too, so what, what do you expect? I want to say it's episode 40, big fo- Oh, is it? Nah, it's episode 39. I was close, though. I was close, and we got the representative in the building. What's going on with the best kept secret? Hey, hey, hey. How are we doing? I am doing amazing. You are now officially official... The official co-host of the Knowing by Podcast, everybody. We're going to have to get some round of Yay. applause for y'all. Make sure you get some round of applause. You know what I mean? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm excited. I cannot wait. Now, this is the real question I should have asked you from the gate. Are you, are you ready? You're up for my bullshit, though. Because um, I know you hear the podcast, so you know I'll be on my shit, though. I mean, listen, I'm, I, I'm always ready. I, I, you know what? That's why you're the best character. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's a fact. We got a special guest in the building today. We got Janetti. From the Janetti is in real life podcast, right. uh, among other things, he we will get on the mic right now. He's not on the mic right now, but we're gonna get him on the mic and we're gonna definitely have a conversation with him and we're gonna uh, include him in. We are definitely in the process of upgrading some some equipment and so that we could actually get this group actual panel style podcast thing going on. So stay tuned for that. Y'all y'all ain't gonna be tripping. You won't be high. It, it definitely will be like three people talking at once. Clearly, on for one, for the first time on Knowing by Podcast, so uh, that's something big right there. So, how was your week so far? How how was everything? Oh, my week was super busy. I'm like stressed out, oh. but in a good way. Oh so shit! Stuff is oh, starting shit. to happen. Bubble. I'm juicy. first first world problems and shit. Yes, I'm trying to have those like you know rich white women issues. Me too. I'm trying to I'm trying to have rich rich people problems. Period. I don't give a fuck. Mm. I done been broken. No one knew me already, so now I might as well have money and nobody know me. Or, or if that's the if that's the price of fame, then fuck it. You could take my pitch. I don't care. I'm getting this money, money. Man, money. I, I will say, I don't know if I necessarily want fame anymore. You like they don't get privacy. Nah, I mean I don't care at this point. I've been in prison, so I didn't had I didn't had I didn't stare at guards where they staring at me taking a shit like. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. It don't like. Uh, uh, you, when just just so you know, when you go to prison, you lose all your shame. Like you ain't got no shame after that, bro. Like you, there ain't even doors on the shitters. You feel me? Like so, you gotta learn how. And I don't know how people do it. I don't know how I did it, but I mean, it's no other choice. I mean, I can't. You ain't gonna. Hold, I ain't gonna hold it for four years. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's. It is what yeah, it I'm is. Backed up. Fuck, I'd be dead. You imagine that shit? And be like, what happened? Oh, that motherfucker was constipated. I ain't gonna time. lie. I definitely don't think I'm I'm prison or jail material. Cause my mouth too reckless. They're gonna be like, sit the fuck down. I'm be like, gonna beat your you ass. Gonna have to shoot me. The, gar- I ain't the guards, no are, the guards where. are gonna drop elbows on your ass. I just for real. see. I feel like I would get beat up all the time. Well, you know what? That's because you meant for, to be free, though. I think we're all meant to be free. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it just unfortunately, I think some people fall to the system and um. They get comfortable with that being their life. You dig what right. I'm saying? It becomes so, more of a lifestyle than it is just a temporary and, situation. And their standard or their hope, depending on what they, where it's coming from, kind of drops. Mm-hmm. So it's like whatever. Like The whole time I was there, I don't give a fuck. I was on there, you know what I mean? Doing what I was doing. I was doing my time. I never once was comfortable in there. That's you know a good I mean? thing. Yeah, I couldn't. I could never be comfortable in it. That's not. It, it just wasn't for me. I, I I know that my life has a better purpose than that. And I'm, I'm not. I mean, we all make mistakes, and I went and did my time. And shout out to all the homies that's locked down and shit. But y'all know, y'all know everybody. It's the same thing that everybody thinks about. If I had another chance, if I didn't do this and I wasn't in here, you know, everybody would would pick something better. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So, um, but yeah. So busy. Can you talk about why it was busy? Oh, yeah, so... Okay, um, you know what I'm saying? Bless the people. <laughs> Bless the people. Uh, well, you know, I, I got... Um, I'm working on a new contract for one of my businesses called We Define Renaissance Management. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, I got everything. So I'm like the guru of resources. That like, should sound like prestige. Bro. I'm wow. so serious. Like, I was just busy because I was like, I found out... Like they, you know, they paying people PG and E. So you know, I ain't paid my PG and E the whole pandemic. <laughs> I was oh, like, shit. I'm not giving y'all nothing because y'all said y'all not turning it off. Man, found this program. They just hit me. They was like, boop, paid fourteen hundred dollars for my PG and E. I said, oh, really? Thank you. <laughs> These are the type of things that we need you for. That the people need you for. Like, don't you know what I mean? Like, 
I, I, I know you're going to be a great mm-hmm. addition to this because this is the type of shit you could drop on people and let them know and give them some And I about. feel like everybody should be taking advantage of these services. So I used to work for an elected official, right? Well, I've worked for two. But okay. one of the things that I learned is that there is a lot of people out there that want to be like the philanthropist. They want to give away money. They want to help the needy, the less fortunate. But they create so many loopholes that you just be have to be willing to deal with the bullshit before you actually get it. I'm one of those people. I deal with the bullshit because, listen, mm. and they just paid $5,000 for my school. Sure did. I was like, mm, I utilize all my resources. And I tell yeah. anybody, I can have a million dollars in the bank and I'm broke. I ain't got it. Well, see, that's why I feel like that's where they do shit. Just like the same thing with grants and business mm-hmm. stuff that you could get out there to take part of. They don't make it easy for just anybody because, in a sense, it kind of like breeds laziness. Mm-hmm. It kind of, and kind of also like, it's just like the blueprint of this of this country. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't want to give you nothing. They want you to go out and work and find it. And if you find it and you manage to use your wits and whatever whatever uh, ingenuity that you have. And go in and get, take advantage of these things. They're out there. There's a lot of shit out there. You know what I mean? When I came home, the same thing. Like, not to go back to that or nothing, but uh, same shit. I, I applied for a lot of grants and stuff because I went back to school. And a lot of shit for, for being in my situation specifically, mm-hmm. uh, I, got a, I got a lot of grants. I got like yeah. two grants on some shit just because I was a, you know, a Hispanic male and... There was, there was grant all, kind of all shit. kinds of shit like you 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 name it there's all kinds of programs yeah. somebody just told me also about a first time buyers program that's going on right now so oh that's been going on most people yeah. just didn't know about it didn't know about it and I'm like, but like man, there's, there's like a pandemic style one ain't there there's a like pandemic that? style one but they've always had a first time home buyers program they got keep your home California they got like there's hella money for people that want to do it you just got to be willing to jump through the hoops but then the other thing is really everything is about what they can prove. That's so as, listen, depending on what the program is, I'm not gonna lie. I tell everybody, um, you know, I feel like people lie every day. So why should not lie in a way that's gonna benefit me? So yeah. well, we're not gonna say lie. We're gonna say um, be vague. Yeah, I, I'm we're just, not lying. You're not I'm lying. Be forthcoming with exactly. everything. Exactly, and, and and that's just <laughs> and that's just how it goes. Like like that's like once again, that's how the system is built. They want you to go out there and find a way. The, the most richest people on this fucking planet finessed here and there. I don't give a fuck. Nobody went they straight do. by the butt. And they finesse now, but I'm saying to get where they were going, they finessed the whole fucking lot too. Exactly. So it's it's it's, it's the way this country is built. So regardless of the fact, it, that's just how shit works. That's exactly so, um, what I feel like. You okay, so. Do what you got to so, do until you can do what you want. So, so, yeah, I had that going on. And then I've had, okay. I've been getting more clients consistently. Plus, I started working on the development of... I'm going to start vlogging. I'm very serious about that. You should. I'm definitely going to vlog my whole process because I've been working out. Plus, I work out at like 5 o'clock in the morning every day. So, I wake up super duper early, been going to bed super duper late. So, I just be tired. But, you know, it's all for a benefit. It is. And, and I feel like now, me, me and Janetti were actually having this conversation before we got on the mic. And I've been said it quite a few times on the podcast. Is that podcasting is now the news. Mm-hmm. It's now... It's now the current events. It's now where podcasters are the current re- field reporters because people are tired of mainstream media because it's either skewed all the way to the left, or all the way to the right. There's re- if you find some middle ground media, a lot of times it's not pushed out to the forefront like the other ones are. So for mainstream mainstream media, it's 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 one political side or the other. It's like at least with podcasting, you get information straight from the source. Mm-hmm. And like I was telling him, I was like, I'm not always factually, actual, factual down to the T, but I let that be known from the gate. Right. If I hear something and I pass some information on, I make sure to also tell people, it's like, go do your research. Go go, go see if what I'm saying is, is truly legitimate. Don't just, uh, you know, there's too much blind following of things nowadays to where people... Or- People take something with it and run and are ready to go at odds with anyone over it when it's not even that deep. Or sometimes it be misinformation. Right. The, the, the other day, I, 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 it was on Facebook like a couple weeks back. This chick was like, I just seen this uh, just seen this in Pleasant Hill. And it was a, the gas prices were like $8 or some crazy shit. So off top, I knew it was fake. And then at the top, her caption was, I, could, should go, I sure could go for an orange guy. That makes bad jokes and 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 um, and you know referring to Donald Trump basically. Right. So I could I could sure go for that right about now, like trying to say that because the high gas prices has something to do with this current administration and and that she's willing to put up with this disrespectful uh, racist person running the country or whatever. Long story short, I was like, yo, I was like, this is a fake picture, and if you love Trump, just say that. 
Because a lot of people were saying that when the gas prices go up, they're like, oh, we need Trump back in office. We need this. I'm like, look, look the gas bro. prices go up every summer. You talking about short attention span motherfuckers that, that you know what? <laughs> it, uh, it, what's Instagram? Uh, uh, what's a real? What's a, a thing? It's like 30 seconds. That's their attention span. Mm-hmm. Most people were on there like, yeah, fuck yeah. And it's like, y'all hella dumb. First of all, that's a fake picture to begin with. Hella obvious. Right. Ain't nowhere no $10 for no fucking gas. You feel me? Period. Facts. They ain't that's making no the money. Case, they better get them a Costco card because it's still $3 <sighs> and some change there. But but you dig what I'm saying though? So like, like if you love that, say that. Though, but don't don't throw stupid shit around like, you know what I'm saying? It's the age of misinformation. So to it me, really uh, to is. me, the podcasting is the middle ground still. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I could I could say some shit on one side makes sense and some shit on another side makes sense from my perspective as a human. You know, I definitely don't fuck with the I don't fuck with the disrespecting of of races and people. I don't fuck with the injustice. So anywhere that whoever lies on that side, I don't fuck with you off the gate. It ain't right. got no, it don't mean that don't mean I'm I'm a Biden or I'm a fucking left or right or whatever the fuck these motherfuckers be saying. That just means that as for me, I'm for, I'm a person as for the people by the people. You feel right. what I'm saying? All people. You dig what I'm saying? So you're never going to see me on the side of some hate. You're never going to see me um, too far on any side. I'm on the people's side. Wherever the, all the people are that are with me too, that's where I'm at. But um, okay, okay. Busy, busy. I ain't been doing shit. You know what I'm saying? We had um, we had another week. We did a um, we did the Stick Gang Cypher, San Francisco and Oakland. I'm so sorry, but yo. Okay, look. I'm going to keep it with you. I'm going to keep it super funky with you. I went there and I expected to not do much. Because I'm just hosting, so I'm right. coordinating locations. I'm I, so I went and scope locations for him to shoot, um, and you know I'm just I'm just on point for anything. You know what I'm saying letting letting my partners from 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 Los Angeles come up and all the artists be artists and let them so, let them do that. But it turns out I had more responsibilities than I thought. So okay. when you was Go hitting me, I know that resume. I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I, you know, man, I many hats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all of them fit different, but they all fit. But uh. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was, it was, we had a good ass time. We have not one problem, not one negative attitude, not nothing. Everybody showed up. They showed out to represent themselves and their, and their, their, their organizations or their labels or whatever that they are as artists. And, um, you know, it went off without a hitch. We did the San Francisco one. We did the Oakland one first with the ladies. The ladies bodied it. I'm going to show y'all some background shit later on. Um, we did the one in San Francisco and my folks from LA and people from other parts of the Bay that were I mean California that were there that weren't familiar with Bay Area weather mm-hmm. specifically San Francisco weather they find out the, the hard confusion. way they will find out that it's cold than the motherfucker out there right All now the midsummer he was like bro I came out here it's like 108 where I live at. I come out here. It's fucking... I'm like, yeah, bro. I was like, I thought you know. I, I already knew. <laughs> and I'm the type of person that I look... If I'm going to another city and I'm going to be there for a while, I'm looking at the weather. Like, what am I... But we wet. You know what I mean? But we, yeah. we got to wear. So, shout out to them. Shout out Stick Gang Cypher, Stick Gang Legs, Stick Gang Kush. Appreciate the... Um, you know what I mean? The Appreciate y'all just... You know what I'm saying? Handling y'all business. Hope the Bay treated y'all right. I know I did my part. And uh, y'all, I'll be making sure that in the announcements and stuff like that, I talk about when the shit drops and everything. Um, that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? We got a we got a motherfucking podcast ahead of us. We do got Janetti in the building. Janetti in real life podcast, in case you guys didn't know. And uh, we're going to chop it up. We're going to get into these things. So uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right, right back. By podcast, some blaze. That's... The best kept secret. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I don't want. I didn't want to say it for you because I feel like you should be able to introduce yourself how you want to introduce it. You know what I mean? Like how, whatever you prefer. Because I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with and the best kept secret. I'm gonna say your whole fucking thing. So. Oh, you can. All right. So that works. and then we got Janetti. Introduce yourself, bro. Who are you? Hey, this is Janetti, aka Janetti in Real Life Podcast. But in Janetti film, you listen to music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, another man of many hats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You know, in, in, in this day and age, you got to do a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? Everything. You got to do a little bit of everything, but you also got to do a lot of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyways, we're here and, we, and we're off into the next segment. You know what I mean? We got that here and now where we talk about current events and things, things of like that. So um, let's see what we got. I know that you, I mean, let's just jump straight into it, man. Fuck the dumb shit. I know y'all seen the... Um, been following and watching along as everyone else has with the ho- with the whole um, injustices that've been going on, specifically most recently with George Floyd, and um, you know we 
coming from where we're coming from, I think we could all relate and we could all say we all know what that's about mm -hmm. as far as personally, because we've either seen it or been victims of similar brutalities. And I know I know that uh, a lot of people talk about this shit, but I don't see a lot of people that I know that a, a lot of a lot of content creators speak about it and I'm not knocking nobody. But I, I feel like a lot of them don't know what that personally is like. And you know what I'm saying? To have been beat up by the police. Seeing someone you know that care about beat up and roughed up by the police. Get straight disrespected by the police. And, and, and even worse things than that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but because I have, and I know I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure I can speak for all of us because we all have known or personally have been uh, done, like, have felt that. So, yeah, I have. you know I what I mean? I haven't had it done to me. But you, I know you've seen it or I know you know somebody. I definitely have seen it because they used to fuck with my husband all the time. And even now, I think sometimes people forget, like, killing somebody don't just affect one person. So, like, yep. for me, I'm a widow. My husband was murdered. Pittsburgh PD ain't even looking for the murderer. They was able to give me, like, all this information and do all this stuff. But, like, three weeks. Wait, was it three weeks? It was, like, three weeks after my husband was murdered. Um... They ended up telling me that the clay, the case was going to be closed with no resolution. Like, even though they were able to, like, describe the car and do all this. But my point in saying that is... It can't... There's no it way. I don't... like, a family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, the way you... Yeah, they just act like it only affects that individual. No, the fucking don't. It yeah. affects everybody. It affects everybody. Like I said, we all know it's... it's unfortunately... Uh, we said it a few a, a few podcasts ago. Everybody knows either someone that's been incarcerated, has is currently incarcerated, or that is currently on some type of probation or parole. Right. And, and they I, keep people on probation and parole for fucking forever. Yeah. 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 Um, no, most definitely they. That's well. That's where it starts. It's like if you could get. I don't know, it's like, it's so weird, it's like fucking workers, almost. Because it is a fucking, the whole prison industrial complex is all about free labor and cheap labor and, and tax write-offs and things like that. So, uh, right? Yeah, money. Yeah, money. a lot of it. So, I mean, I mean... A lot of people that buy Victoria's Secret, you know people in prison is making that. Yeah. Or and like, when we think about wildfires... They're like, fighting them, they're out there risking yeah, their lives. Those firefighters are making hella money, but wildfires, my husband was in fire camp. There's yeah. a lot of prisoners that's yeah. keeping these wildfires going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they get out and y'all act like they ain't shit. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm like, actually glad that they passed a law where they're allowing uh, people that actually worked in those programs, felons, mm -hmm. to actually apply now to be become like firefighters and um, not just firefighters, but um, I forgot there's something else besides firefighter that you could be. But, they yeah, but it's part of fire. Yeah, they should, and you think it would make sense, but. Like I said, it's like a sick... The, the whole system, as far as the prison industrial complex, is like... Um, it's like having clients, almost, in a sense. Or having... You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You throw out outrageous sentences. You get people incarcerated. And then you put them on a revolving door of parole and probation. And you got basically a worker for life, damn near. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wonder if that's true when I was reading it, too. They said they've been paying them a dollar to work. Yeah. They've been yeah, like yeah. 80 cents. Yeah, yeah, they and that's a lot because in fucking prison, I was working in the kitchen making like ten cents an hour, twenty five yeah. cents an hour was like the most you could get working in the prison. And then when you go out to fire camps and stuff like that, you get a pay bump, but you're only making like a few bucks an hour, like like if at that sometimes. You know what I mean? It ain't it ain't nothing. It, it, it's it's for what they do. Yeah, that's why I said I'm glad at least they passed that law. So at least they're training. They have options to go out there. You know, and do something and have a job instead of having to struggle and try to find a job. It's like, well, now, because uh, they took a lot of the trades out of prison, too. So there's not a lot of trades in there that people could go and learn anymore. That's because they were getting jobs. Exactly. And what happens? That breaks the cycle. Right. And now they got to fucking find somebody else to incarcerate. But then the other catch-22 to that is when they, um, because when my husband was trying to apply to do wildfire, like for a job for the summer, whatever the season is. Um, yeah, for the, the wildfire When you season. have to figure out who do who should you be putting like for previous employer, uh, they told him to put like the correctional facility that he was in, and you know naturally when they see the correctional facility, it's like oh no, already. I don't want I don't want to work with him. 
and it's yeah. like but he but you're asking me. that's like asking for the have you you know do you got felonies thing like sorry I feel like um, I feel like employers shouldn't be able to background check you until after you got the job, and they shouldn't be able to fire you uh, uh, about the job depending on what it is that you're incarcerated for. Like you could put in the stipulations right away, like yo, look, I can't do if you have robberies or whatever, stealing. This we don't, we can't. You know what I mean? Even though that's but discriminatory. How do you not background check, but still be able to ask, still say I don't want people who got robberies. <sighs> You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's kind of no like sense. one of those things where I don't want to be judged based off of my past. Mind you, a lot of people is doing like you know the background checks is only what like ten years I think max unless you're going mm-hmm. for a government job. Mm-hmm. So some of them like shouldn't even show up if you did. Yeah. If they're doing a like a five year background check and you got convicted seven years ago, I shouldn't have to tell you about that. Before every exactly. reason, it seems like stuff. But they ask still, yeah. yeah they ask. And it's like it's like a setup, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not like saying I've gotten know. jobs and I've been forthcoming, but I've had to also pick the lightest felony that I have, and I just be like, I, "Oh, you ever been to prison? Yeah, I've, I've been to prison for possession of a firearm." Um, right. I leave out all the extra shit because it's like <laughs> it, it's violence, so they're gonna be like, "Oh hell no, get this motherfucker out of here," you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's really stupid violence. Like it's just dumb. Like and it, in and, all honesty. There's a, like, really, you really want to know, a lot of these she, hey, she whispered, she whispered, like, like we're not on mic and this ain't a podcast and shit. But go on ahead. No, <laughs> there's hella criminals <laughs> that do white dollar crimes and y'all act like that's not as bad. Like, they are embezzling money and all kind of shit oh, yeah, and still will sure. be able to go back and because they have the knowledge, still be able to flip, start a new job. Do something like, else, yeah. Come on now, y'all. Yeah. That's why I, this is why I treat society the way I treat it. Like, as far as I'm concerned, y'all gonna take care of me. I don't give a fuck what you gotta do, but you're mm-hmm. gonna make sure I'm good. Yeah, you got and you got and you got to cut corners and shit, and you got to find hacks. Like they say, that's that's the new shit, right? Life hacks. So, anyways, getting onto the subject though, and that just goes to show you how deep we had a whole little mini conversation <laughs> just based on that part of this whole story of this whole um, situation. But Derek Chauvin, I know you guys probably been following. I know I have more or less. I'm not a fanatic or nothing like that because I don't I don't like let shit get to me. You know what I mean? Right. And that shit pisses me off. So. I'm aware of it, but I don't follow it hella closely. But he just got convicted. He got 22.5 years, right? Yeah. 22.5 years. Um, How about 60? Age 60, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a if cop, he though. He lives that long. He will. He's a... He, bro, come well, on. We don't know that. You see how his hairline is receding. He's stressed out That's every true. day. That's true. He you probably got to be a... And somebody, 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 he might go in there and somebody might try to take his cakes and shit. And Man, that, that is somebody's <laughs> girl right now. Hairline receding in age 30, so he's been... Forty, so that, 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 and that, that, but see the thing is at this at the end of the day he's gonna go somewhere safe for himself though they're gonna go somewhere safe you know what I mean he, he ain't gonna have that much hard of a time you know I wouldn't be surprised if they treat him a little extra good in there because a lot of the CEOs are racist as fuck to begin with so but sometimes that don't put him in PC don't put him in PC that's damn near where he's gonna go I guarantee it he's probably just right out the gate the time. but so um how do you feel about that how do you personally? I'm gonna ask both of y'all one at a time. So I'm gonna start with you. I'll let the guests go first. All right, after you, Janetti. How do you feel about the the sentence? I mean, I kind of get an idea already, and I, you get you should know because I think we're all kind of on the same page. But how do you feel about it? What you feel like when you heard it? When you heard the verdict? Well, I feel we should got life, but at the same time, 22 and a half is good to me. Just off the fact that my the, the people in jail shouldn't allow him to live. 22 and a half years. <laughs> so I figure he won't be getting out. That's yeah. all I mean. There's going to be parole. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't even think that. He shouldn't even live to, to that part right there. To get to that <laughs> point. Yeah. I feel if he do three good years, he's just like, like I call him people like, what's up, what's up, man? What's going on there? Who, is he in PC? It's like, I feel like, you know, national news. Everybody got, you know, emails, phones, all that type of stuff. They know who he is. So I feel like, 20, you know, 22 and a half years is, 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 I feel life, 22 and a half years, I feel you shouldn't do it. Even, I don't, I don't think he'll survive five, you ask me. Living wise. He shouldn't. Go ahead, y'all. Keep oh. Um, don't mind me, this is a podcast. We be, <laughs> be far from professional, just so y'all know. <laughs> Shit happens, we move around. You might, you might, I might answer a call depending if it's an emergency or something. Okay, okay. So don't, okay. don't even worry about it. Gotcha. Well, <clears throat> my opinion is biased. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I, like I said, my husband was murdered. 
and I have kids. And after mm-hmm. hearing from his daughter, like, I was real deal in the house crying. Like, that is so fucked up that this baby has to grow up yeah. and we don't even know how she's actually understanding or comprehending. Kids have so much access to just, like, social media and TVs and And she knows. So she's, she's been in the seen up there her the- dad die. Yeah. That shit is fucking traumatic. So as far as I'm concerned, we should chop his head off. Like, mm. I feel like you might as well, you need the death penalty. We really just need to stick a needle in your arm. But, it, you know, if they only want to give him 22 years, I mean, he's a white man. So I didn't expect you to do a whole lot. Uh, I mean, so I I'm not going to bet $1,000 on somebody right now. He won't, he won't last five. I'm just saying, especially specifically for the kids, like, that should, my situation was traumatic for yeah. my kids. And I got a son and a daughter, and they eight and ten. So I could just only imagine how any of his kids feel. And then the shit is like literally people was recording him dying. Like you saw the whole process. That shit is fucking traumatic. So as far that as that shit, concerned, super traumatic. Die. That's how I feel, and I feel like it should be a public thing, and your kids should be able to watch it the same way they watch George Floyd. I am very big on an eye for an eye. So I feel you. Uh, when it comes to that, I, I'm a I'm the type of person is like I'm not here to tell nobody how much time they should have got or anything like that because I don't believe in the judicial system as it is to begin with. I don't believe it it'll ever be fair or it is fair. So for me, I I believe in karma. So mm-hmm. I believe that whatever this man got coming to him, he'll have coming to him, and 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 only uh you know what I'm saying only God up above whatever you believe in you know what I'm saying the universe, Jesus or whatever you know what I mean. It, I, I, f- I believe in karma and I believe you know what I mean so he, he gonna he gonna definitely feel what he did that's how I feel like and, and I, I and I'm surprised to be honest with you in my personal opinion I'm super surprised that it he even got that much I was too cause actually. I was really I was lightweight kind of expecting like five a, years uh, no like no like a manslaughter charge and maybe like seven eight years you know what I'm saying which I mean, look! Look at what the dude that killed fucking the Oscar Grant guy, and it was on fucking. He got like two years and some probation. But I think it's because people are realizing now just how much impact social media have. Social media has made yeah. it so that you cannot hide behind the badges, the this, the that, because everybody has. But that was a on walking, video too, talking, though. Like, yeah, that was on video too. But I don't think I don't think Oakland turned down. The whole city, like Minnesota did when he died. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, they didn't yeah. tear the city up. Yeah. yeah. No. Because what's it called? Um, but I even know, like Trayvon Martin, they got a whole call. And then this dude get the fuck out and then go traumatize his fucking girlfriend, like pull guns out on her, and he's still walking. Like, uh, yeah, that shit because just I, be crazy. I mean, because I've, se- I've seen more of it happening the other way where it's less a couple years. Like I said, Oscar Grant and... Um, just, just things like that where you know, like it was just, it was unnecessary. Right. Uh, I was, I was thinking that they were gonna try to use that. Um, what was the lady that got? Um, wasn't there just another lady cop that got that went to prison because she said she thought she pulled? Oh, Bowen or something like that. She went to his house on accident. Yeah, and she thought because they lived in the same thing. Yeah, but no, which one? I, no, I know her, but wasn't there somebody else that said? Oh, I thought it was um, a, a recently, taser. Recently, but she don't think she went. She quit. She quit her job. Yeah, but that yeah. see that's the thing. See, like that was the defense for the Oscar Grant thing. That was their defense. That he thought he, that he, thought he pulled his thing and he yeah. shot him once. And the other, the other one was way uh, more wild, unbelievable. Like right. there's no way after like you let it off once, you should fucking know it's not a fucking taser. You get what I'm saying? Ain't no way you letting off a few shots. You know what I mean? Because even a taser don't work. Like if you knew, if you thought you were pulling your taser, you only pull the trigger once and but squeeze it. But they say it. a taser and a gun don't even weigh the same. And they're on the both sides of the waist. And See, but they, they are. Yeah, or? Both yeah. Side, different sides. They're, they're sides. supposed to be on different sides. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because of that, you're supposed to know like whatever hand you are handed. Is your shooting hand that that'll go on the appropriate waist, and then the other side will be for your taser for right. that. And they what they try to use is the whole oh, um, you know, under duress. It was shit. That, you know, the shit was popping off and all that. So I was kind of like, man, I hope they don't try to use that same shit again with this lady that they did with that. But I mean, I've seen worst case scenarios where people got less for doing just as much, if not more. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm mean, people, I mean the fucking police. So I was surprised that it got that it that that actually he got some time. Um, I believe in karma, like I said. So whatever he got coming to him, it will be on its way, and it'll be times ten, because that's how it usually comes. Because one is too much. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like you said, all the people that it affects, family members, uh, your daughter, your 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 son. You know what I mean? The whole situation is the most traumatic. And the fact I've had so much shit like that I could talk about, but I don't really want to because of that type of stuff that I've I've seen and witnessed. 
So to me, like I said, it, it, at the end, what brings me peace is that I know that everybody, no matter what they do, they got whatever they got coming to them coming. And most people think that, oh, because of social media age that you see somebody doing well and they're having a, a great time and they don't ever show you their hard times, um, that they, they're, they, they ain't got no karma. That's bullshit. They just not showing you their karma. Facts. Yeah, that's that's why I was saying five years. It's like, I believe in karma like you do. So mm-hmm. I feel like... That shit gonna come around fast. It's gonna come around fast, yo. It's gonna come around fast. And, and if it don't, and that's what's meant for him, maybe it's meant for him to suffer. Maybe the thing he hates the most in his world, his hell, is being in jail, period. Even if he's living comfortable. See, you know what I'm saying? Different things affect people differently. So if it's meant to be that he, you know, spends his rest of his life in there, that's what it's meant to be. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So we're just gonna keep it moving. We're just gonna keep it moving, but we're gonna keep it in the same breath because this shit kind of go hand in hand y'all y'all for y'all out there all the listeners you guys are smart enough you guys could, could see a theme when it starts developing <laughs> and you could see you, you could tie things together but uh it's something i've seen on your timeline and i've seen it through on a couple mm-hmm. other places that were somewhat verified they're hood verified you did i seen it on <laughs> baller alert if you really want to know you know what i'm saying so like i tell y'all the disclaimer is, is that don't follow me uh, go do your own research. But from what they said, the first capital riot got sentenced to probation and five hundred dollar fine. Bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so look. How just, the fuck do you take down the whole? The, the what's first supposed one. to be the biggest? First capital riot sentenced to probation and five dollar fine. Fair or bullshit? Source baller alert. Yeah, I didn't. I wrote that down, and he said bullshit before I even got a chance to ask <laughs> is that bullshit or not. So what does that tell you right there? Are we Man, not on the fuck, bullshit? Are we not on the same fucking page or what? Man, because I'm like, come on now. Like I remember when they did, um, when they did that whole millionaire, uh, million man march when uh, Obama got a, in office. Mm-hmm. They had all this goddamn security. They was ready to shoot whoever. But then you telling me that these motherfuckers not only did they riot, but they got in. They was touching y'all shit. They getting information. Your they mail. taking yeah. They checking. They like taking pictures, making a mockery of you. And all they got was five hundred dollar fine. See now to Fucking give it to, to play devil's advocate. I just hope. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I just hope that this is like. <coughs> Cause let's keep it real. There's different levels to the people that storm the building. There's just some people that walk through there with their flag. <clears throat> then you got the motherfuckers, like you said, that fucking kicked their feet up on the desk and started checking mail and answering phones and shit. Like, there's different levels to it, right? And like I said, I'm not here to tell anybody who should what and go to jail or whatnot. I'm just here. I'm just calling out the bullshit. You feel me? Like I said, I believe in karma. And that lady that fucking, that got blasted, you know, I feel bad for her family because that's not their choice, what their, mm-hmm. their child chose to do or whatever their family, uh, whatever they, their family, if their family was ignorant as fuck. Every, I mean, now if they're ignorant, then it is what it is. I mean, then right. the apple don't fall far from the tree. But what I'm saying is, is that uh, I feel, I don't feel no remorse for her because <clears throat> we done got way worse out here, y'all. We done got way worse out here for far less. So... Um, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? When it comes to that shit, it's like you said, bullshit. I call bullshit too. What do you call it? You call bullshit too on that, right? Man, all of that is bullshit. It's all bullshit. We just wanted to throw that out there. You know, we're not really a political podcast. I try not to get too much into that because I feel there's enough of that out there. I try to really podcast and give people like uh, a break from reality, good conversation, little jokes here and there, some sound effects, a little bit of weed. That's kind of what I do. But, um... At the same time, I'd be foolish and, and, and ignorant myself if I didn't at least address it, having a platform and at least let people know where I stand, you know what I'm saying, as far as, or, or what I believe, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I'm not for sure, but I feel like you can get more fire out of fine if I open up your mail, personally, come here and open your mail, then go to the White House. I'm not their mail. <laughs> Come on, bro. The thing is, the thing is that, I yeah. I can get a fucking coupon open your shit up and I can get a fucking <laughs> down on five percent of your coupon. And that's some motherfucking fact right here. And we don't need, we don't need a, a, a book or an internet search to tell us that. It's just one of them things we know, like, from personal experience. It's like, yeah, you know, bullshit. and I know, I don't, I, we don't, it's bullshit. We don't call it what it is. Everybody out there, if you believe it's bullshit too, then, you know what I mean, you're a very enlightened person. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people don't know what the fuck to believe Man, nowadays. If you're not you know? calling it bullshit, then I need to. I want to understand your way of thinking. Because I, me, I, I got... have learned, based off of just life experiences, 
some people are unintentionally ignorant to reality. Well, I want to know those people because I got something for them to buy. Like, I, if they're stupid like that, I mean, I could no, sell you a million like, different I'm, fucking things. When I tell you, I'm so dead ass. There are people in this world, like, you know, they got the Fox News and then they got, like, CNN and different mm-hmm. stuff. And that's all separated, like, if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Yeah, yeah, that's all skewed. That's what you're going to watch. But there are some people, like, think about a girl who grew up in Walnut Creek, went to Crondelet, only went to private schools, and her understanding of the hood is only what the fuck she didn't see on TV. Yeah, or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so her, most wanted. Yeah, yeah, so her understanding of I don't understand why they're acting like this because he was only trying to do his job. Yeah. Like shit like that is like real and you actually have to have conversations with them. Because yeah. I remember um, I was working for an elected official when that Trayvon Martin thing happened and one of the guys that I was working with, he made a comment like, I don't understand why he didn't just stop. I was like, well, first of all, why would he stop for a stranger? The, a mind plain you, clothes stranger. Right. And mind you, this man, he is <laughs> not an officer. He is not a security guard. He is a stranger. I was like, and I'm telling you from the perspective of a mother, my children are not allowed to talk to strangers. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, we should get as far a away as you can him. from that person. So you get what I'm saying? But his understanding, he is from like Concord, Walnut Creek. He's only been to private schools. And then when he chose to go to school, he went to St. Mary's. He already knew that he was going to get a job working at the district attorney office because his dad did this job. And that's he got that job like all of that stuff some of that stuff is just planned and it's it's unintentional ignorance yeah. because the way your parents have sheltered you from reality yeah. you they don't, don't understand the that there's two different tiers yeah, so yeah, you yeah. don't see like my situation of living in the hood like yeah no nah, we can't just be you talking about just have my stuff delivered to my door yeah. hell no that shit gonna get stolen man Take different it to standard. the office. Like, so your it's understanding of life way, yeah. is different. It's most definitely, and you're absolutely right. You got to, um, to me, I, I'm, I'm a believer in educating first. So if I could, like, explain something to somebody without overdoing it, because if you don't catch it right away, okay, that's maybe how you're raised up's fault. You raised up's fault. But when somebody breaks it down to you and you still don't catch it, you don't, you know what I mean? And that's your fault after that. You yeah, get what I'm that's saying? That's true. Because but it's I, like, like I said, some people is just... They were brought up a different way, yeah, and 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 because I've met plenty of people that, you know, it, it was all stereotypes, you know, mm-hmm. for and and once we broke through that and actually had a conversation, it changed the whole way that people looked at each other. At least that's how they made it, and their actions showed it for me. So right. I, I, I'm 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 the type of person that I, I if you could show me some understanding, I don't have to agree with you, and I don't have to because I don't agree with you, I don't have to hate you or be, you know what I mean? Right. You, I, I'm going to try to understand you And if you could understand me That would be great But if you don't Then I know I just can't fuck with you like that You right. know what I'm saying Because um, there, there, There's opportunities Where you got to put the smash down And there's also opportunities Where you could just Educate somebody real quick And set them straight Because a lot of times Like you said Sometimes it's willful ignorance And sometimes It's being sheltered And not using your common sense because no matter what side you're on, you grew up in common sense. Common sense, what's right is but right, what's wrong. Sense is not always it, it, you're right, you're right, you're absolutely right about that. So common that's common. why that's why a lot of motherfuckers <laughs> have these problems. But see, the things that people, the ones that do have common sense, and even if they ain't figured it out, are the ones that try to have understanding themselves. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Because I've, like I said, I've seen all walks of people and how to deal with people on all kinds of different levels. So for sure that. But at the same time, it's like I really don't. Um, I try to show tolerance, but I have no, uh, I have no tolerance for the bullshit neither. If that makes right. sense, yeah, yeah. like if you're willfully doing it, or if like I say, I, I check you and like, yo, don't talk like that in front of me. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then they go past that, then that's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah. I feel my bad, my like. Bad. No. In, oh, fuck you, I'm gonna say what I was saying. Okay, now I'll be your ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In conversation, I feel like I try to assess. I don't even want to call it ignorance. But I do feel like there's a very big difference between um, listening and comprehension. Just because you hear the words that's coming out my mouth don't mean that you comprehend what the fuck I'm saying. And that is like a big part of like when people from two different walks of life have a conversation, if they lack comprehension on how maybe terminology is or maybe understanding background, I just, I can't. Because yeah. I feel like I'm not going to have a conversation with somebody who ain't comprehending what I'm saying. I just need somebody to have some understanding because you know what? I also that I've learned when I was dealing with people that everybody isn't at the journey or the evolution that you might be yourself. Mm-hmm. So you might have to 
school back a little bit just for them to understand you. Right. Like, like not saying that they're not capable of understanding where you're coming from, but maybe the way that you explain it to them. Because, like, everybody has their, 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 their way and the, they deal with things and how they react. So some people, when you try to correct them on some, some people get offensive. Right. Some people listen. Some people don't say shit. You know what I mean? So you, you know what I mean? Everybody reacts with it differently. So to me, as long as you have some kind of understanding and allow me... To um to allow me to have a conversation with you without you getting mad and, and fucking yelling and turning into six. I don't like to argue with nobody loud like that. Period. I don't Man, do the loud, the waving again. your fucking hands. None of that. If we can't have, we can't talk about this regular. Then we're not gonna talk about it. And if you you still can't deal with that, then we go handle it however the fuck it needs to be handled. Because I don't like the arguing. I could, I feel like I could talk to anybody calmly and correctly as long as they talk to me that way and as long as we have an understanding that we're not gonna disrespect each other and we're gonna try to. Understand? Mm-hmm. And I'm cool. Yeah, I'm you know what I mean? saying? Like me, when I look at the sky, I say sky blue. I say, no, nah, sky purple. I say, man, blue. It's purple. All right. All right, bro, it's purple. I'm not yeah. talking to this fool no more. Yeah. Why and, would and you lie to him and agree? Because I know his mind frame is not going to get No, it, it's not lying. It's not lying to him. He told him exactly. He goes, no, it's not. It's blue. And if he wants to believe that, he knows now that it's like, that's just what you believe. Like, I could get mad that you don't believe what I believe. Or I could just keep it moving. But now I know also that that's the kind of motherfucker that's like, I'm not hanging with your ass that much because you're kind of, you're kind of, because what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong, period. And right. there's certain things, justice, whatever you want to call it, the real true meaning of it, what's right is right and wrong is wrong. Everybody know that. That's why I don't understand when and There's it all forms to... of justice in this world, just so y'all exactly. know. Exactly. And that's why I truly don't understand when it comes to um, him being sentenced to 22 and a half years, when people say that is harsh. The number one question I ask is, how much of the video did you watch? Because Harsh. if you can actually sit and watch no, somebody watch murder somebody and then turn around and say that his sentence is harsh. But there's another guy who I think he just like hijacked FBI files or something and leaked them. He got 40 years. Yeah. He ain't killed nobody. He ain't hurt nobody. It was a nonviolent crime and he got like 40 years. Like I said, and that it's just means that bullshit. I feel like you listen. You should just go to hell. Like kill yourself. Yeah. Where I be? Nah, it, it, it's definitely a, it, it, like I said. What's right is wrong is wrong, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out that you know things are very much skewed to one side. You feel right. me? And and for anybody, no matter where you grew up at, to ignore that, it, it, it's it's will for ignorance, and it's also. Basically, you're reinforcing what the people before you kind of laid out for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, all our parents laid out a guideline or a blueprint for us to be who we are as people, right? As humans when we grow up. And a lot of their values, if they teach you the right things, their values follow you. They're, they're ingrained with you in some way or another. If, they, if it's the right shit. And even the wrong shit. You know, sometimes, like, you know what I mean? We learn, because I know I learned a gang of stupid shit from my dad. You feel me? And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a real father-son situation, so... Like, even things like that, you can learn their good and bad from your parents. So, at the end of the day, you're getting the stuff from your parents. And, you, you know, it, you got to find a way to see reality for what it is. Your parents could be wrong. Every, everybody ain't always right for you. You know, there's a lot of people that lived out there. And my mom said I, she didn't want me to do this. Or she didn't want she wanted me to be this person or be like this. And guess what? I proved the wrong and was something way better than that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it ain't always like a negative thing, but... That's neither here nor there. He, um, I hope the motherfucker that got five, uh, that got um, whatever five hundred hours of uh, five hundred dollar fine or whatever. I hope he slip on a fucking banana peel and break his leg or something. At least, man, you give me something more so permanent crazy. than that. I, <laughs> on some level, I feel like it's a good thing that they only got the little ass fine because all they did was open the door for the rest of us to be hella disrespectful. And expect the same treatment. You know that ain't gonna happen, yeah, though. They finna, happen. they finna make yeah. the example will start with us. Just know that. Facts. The example. They'll be up. like, you know what? The first time we were asleep, we acknowledged that, but the second time, we're gonna make sure that this shit never fucking happens again. We fucking went out there with the tanks and the whole shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. I'm good. I, I don't fuck with that shit. Like so. Period. I, whatever. It is what it is. Y'all know. Y'all know how I feel. And, and God know my heart. So for the last little quick topic, you know what I'm saying? Because we are definitely killing it real quick. And then we go. This has to do with our main topic. So um, uh, you know what I mean? We're gonna just to touch it up real quick, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna chop it up with you exclusively on some shit. So I got some specific questions for you. Ooh, you got an exclusive? Yeah, an exclusive. So okay. so check it out. So okay. So the last topic that we're talking about in here and now is the um, 
OnlyFans is about to be uh, what, what do they call that? Um, public. They're gonna go public, but but they what do they call it when they estimate it? I forgot. See, that's why I make notes. You know, we really professional here, y'all. You <laughs> dig what I'm saying? This shit ain't fucking. This ain't for thrills. This is for reals. I want to go public now. I get shit. Oh, they got a valuation. Oh, stocks? they gonna sell stocks. Yeah, that's what's going public. That's what that means. So, so they have a valuation of a billion dollar company. But it's not gonna be a billion dollars once they start shutting down some of that shit. Which brings me to my point. Like I said, they just got valued at. Um, they just got evaluated at a billion dollar company because they're going to go public sooner they're trying to. And they said they're having trouble with investors because of the pornographic side of OnlyFans. You dig? For all them, all them bitches out there showing titties, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Or just for the ladies out there that's, that's cooking, uh, showing you uh, life hacks on how to make a meal with $10. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is you do. But they they are they're having problems with like that's that's what they're trying to do. So they said they're probably gonna get rid of their X rated content makers. So how you feel about that as the businesswoman first? We I feel you. like they full of shit and they hella out of line because in reality, a lot of people that go on like Pornhub and stuff like that, they don't always get paid fairly. So OnlyFans was how they was actually making people subscribe, Direct. but still Cut get, the middle man out. get they money. Yeah. So now I just feel like you fucking with their money and I don't like that. And we all know that I am currently in the entertainment and sports management program at Clark Atlanta University. So I'm trying to represent them. So I need my cut. And how do you feel about that, buddy? I feel I should get that money, you know. As long as they harm nobody, I feel, you know, you do what you need to do. You get paid. Yeah, I mean, and see, the problem is, right, and it's the only thing, like, when you get to an evaluation of a million dollars, that's because you got, that's kind of your worth. And people, that means that you got people that are going to buy into it, right? And, like, what they were saying is the big companies, like, whoever, who the fuck knows who it is? Like, Clorox. I'm sure there's a list. Clorox, fucking Coke, whoever. They have a problem because, you know, they're like a wholesome brand. Like, they mm -hmm. got to protect their brand. Like, McDonald's can't be seen on no Pornhub shit. You, that's why you never see McDonald's ads on fucking, you know, shit like that. Right. Now, I'm not saying I got a lot of experience being on Pornhub or nothing, <laughs> but just know that I've seen enough to know that I ain't never seen them push the McGriddle on motherfucking Pornhub. So, My chicken and titties. Yeah, chicken and you know titties. what I'm saying? I ain't never seen that. So, so for sure, you know what I mean? It's all about... See, and this is what I don't understand. If that's the case, it's like, why doesn't other big corporations that don't give a fuck about that step in and get some of this money and fuck whoever's tripping off that? Because, the, see, the thing is, it's like, this, I me mean, personally, I feel like once they do that and they get rid of all the, the X-rated content makers on there, OnlyFans is going to be lame, bro. It's not going to... In gonna... all honesty, the only thing that's going to happen is somebody else is going to come up with something else. It's not going to be called OnlyFans. It'll be called well, Only you know, Fans. Snapchat is under fire, too. They're really trying to kill that type of shit because Snapchat is under fire for that, too, because of that. Because, it, But it ain't so much for the X-rated shit as much as it is for... Um, they're saying because uh, people out there trapping out there, their, their um, Snapchat. And I guess a couple of this... You know, it had to be some white kids. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean, I'm just going to point out the obvious. But uh, so they, 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 one of them, I guess, purchased... Uh, some fentanyl that they didn't know was fentanyl was supposed to be, I think, pills or something off of uh, somebody on um, Snapchat because, you know, Snapchat allows that a lot of type of shit. They don't give a f They really don't check your content like that. And um, they, they had OD'd and died. So now it's a thing, too. So they're mad at Snapchat is not regulating kind of like selling for having them make the connection. But they see nothing wrong with the child who was doing the drugs and shouldn't have even been buying it in the first place. Exactly. First of all, exactly. It's like, okay, you, your kid goes and buys... You, you, if your kid is going and buying dope on Snapchat from someone they don't know, there's something going on in the house, period, Man. first, before you should worry about what Snapchat is facilitating or not. Now, whether or not I agree to that, I just feel like, hey, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, you make the platform, you give it to the people, you should know already all aspects of people that's going to be taking part in that. And it's like, I feel like they they um, don't like it, but they build their platforms off of that and then they, they get rid of it. You know right. what I'm saying? Cause they get reality, their money they, up. Listen, first of all, drugs ain't going nowhere. So Definitely I don't give not. a fuck what you say, do, think, or feel. The drug game ain't going nowhere. There's always going to be somebody who want to buy drugs, and that's just what it is, and there's always going to be somebody selling them. Yeah. More importantly, I'm trying to figure out why y'all mad at Snapchat and not mad at the parents for not, at minimum, 
teaching your child to do better. If he's going to buy drugs, at least teach him how to actually like look at the drugs, figure but out. See, even like, if you're the squarest parent ever, it's like you're not doing your fucking job. If you like, I, I come from a strict Mexican family, so like, yeah, what? Oh, you're on your phone, random phone checks, like all that shit. If we got to, if you're, act, if you're acting weird, whatever, we're doing all that. I don't give a fuck, and I'm sure it's the same way y'all grew up too, because you know what I mean. That's just like. Our parents, that's the common sense that our parents had. Like, like they're yeah. they're not letting us get way too much. They they know we touch the ground, so we finna check. Like, My what's happening? Come on now. I ain't get a lot Come of stuff. Come, like, Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. It was horrible. I was like, oh. So, so to me, back going back to all that, back to Oli fans and the whole shit, man, it's some bullshit. I feel like they like I just said, they're building their companies around that. Um, shit, bro. Fuck it. It is what it is. We're gonna go ahead and take a little quick break. We're gonna go regroup. And no, actually, fuck a break. We're gonna go ahead and, and and kick off into the put you up on game segment of the podcast, and this is where we talk about our announcements, our shout outs, um, whatever you got going on. If I'm gonna go ahead and let and the best kept secret go ahead and kick it off. Do you got any shout outs or any announcements that you want to make? I do have one announcement. Business things so, and all kinds of stuff. There's an event tomorrow. Is um. There's this place called the Network Event Space. Is um, They're having their grand opening tomorrow, Sunday, June 27th from 1 to 5. And it will be at 62 East 4th Street in Pittsburgh. And it's basically going to be an event space for, like, um, businesses that are trying to, like, find a place to host different things, networking events and things of that nature. And this is where again? It's uh, downtown Pittsburgh. It's going to be at 62 East 4th Street. And this is a place. Where, and what? Okay, so I'm kind of hot. <laughs> Bring it down to me. Hold on, because no. So they basically they're gonna have event space to so rent. So it is an event space mm-hmm. um, that you will be able to rent. Awesome. Um, but it's uh, tomorrow will be more of like a networking type of event, and it's their grand opening. So it'll be an opportunity for you to meet other local businesses and that are tomorrow. within the area. Yes. It's so do I gotta put like a collared shirt on? Can I just I come mean, as is? You smell can like come loud. Out. And, and being like, what's happening? I mean, I'm sure there's something. You know what I'm saying? Tank top, needed. nipple poking out type <laughs> shit. Like, I, I could do all that or I got to get I gotta get a little bit more right. I will say, I always tell people to dress how you want to be treated, not how you feel like you should be. Bro, so that's I'm comfortable. So if I go in there like this, I'm stupid comfortable. It's like, they're you not going to be comfortable. Nah, no, I, I'm talking shit. I know what you mean. But like, I, you got to you gotta no. dress the part. Like, people... I tell people, um... I tell people all the time, like... This is how I feel, right? Because people are always talking about, like, dress code. And I should be able to wear whatever I want, especially women. And they fucking irritate me with that, right? No, I get it. Because I feel like you should dress for the position that you want. That's so, a like, fact. If if I'm looking to go get my car fixed, am I going to talk to the man in the suit that don't actually look like he fixed on cars? Or am I going to talk to the man whose hands got grease on it? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to talk to a real estate yeah. agent about fixing my car. So I'm not going to talk to a hoe about marriage. I'm going to talk to the woman who yeah, actually yeah, looks yeah. like even, she Even though there's like 99% of the population talks to a hoe uh, uh, for the relationship advice. So Which we is gotta, crazy. We got we to gotta stop perpetuating that different. cycle. <laughs> All right, keep going though. No, but my point is, I just feel like when you go to any event, dress for how you want to be treated versus how you feel like you should be treated based off your clothes. Okay, that's really how I feel. Okay, you're right about that, and you're right, and you also got to dress the part, and you also got to understand it's like you are walking into somebody else's situation, mm-hmm. and you're trying to get them to focus on what you bring to the table, not. Um, any attention that you might want to be getting like right. you know you dig what i'm saying that's why there's like business professional look then there's casual it's all that because there's a time place for everything you dig what right. i'm saying so i feel like you know me no that's why i was asking but i already know i mean i might have to button it up a little bit and be a little bit more you know what i'm saying maybe a long sleeve so i'll see my tats right away and then slowly just like everything else I, I reveal who i really am and they just like me anyway so it's all good <laughs> Because I, I, I don't believe like, in hiding who the fuck I am either. But at the same time, I know that everybody ain't ready for that yet. I don't feel like you should hide who you are, but I do feel like, yeah, I mean. I, I know they're going to hate because if I can say with tattoos, I got like, uh, I got nine tattoos, but with my shirt on, you wouldn't see. Yeah, yeah. Do you? Yeah, all yeah. my yeah. Here. yeah, he like Yakuza oh, under his shirt, bro. Yeah. Stop playing. Yeah, when, I off, when I go swimming, you see them all. They call when, that when, the- I go, when I go swimming, you see them all, but... Yeah, like when I come to class, you don't think I got nothing. They call that the T-shirt. Yeah. They think you're square. They yeah. call that the T-shirt where you have a T-shirt tattoo where from the sleeves 
Oh, oh yeah. Around and it's all tattered right here. That's yeah. That's the T-shirt. I heard the fuck out of that. But now nah, you know what I mean. I, I I'm I'm all for that. I think that that's dope. I feel like Pittsburgh actually needs that, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm I'm gonna have to pull up tomorrow just because I want to talk to some people, and I definitely want to see what it is, what's it's gonna take. Cause I'm down for throwing events. Like, I want to do one like once a month. You feel well, me? On I know the person that's on the, the owner. Regular. He also, um, have you heard of the motherfucking spot? The motherfucking spot. This is yeah, the motherfucking spot. Oh no, okay. This the club? That's the other motherfucking spot. You know what I'm talking about? I heard of him. Okay. Well, that's the because it's the motherfucking spot. It's like it really yeah, is the motherfucking spot to be lit. Yeah. But they they host a lot of different. I know I I believe the owner is the same owner as that person. He hosts a lot of different events and he do a lot of good work with the community. I'm but I feel like that. he's I support migrating that. this way because I I'm almost positive only events I've seen have all been like in the Oakland area. It's because there's a need for it out here, just like out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a need, there's a need out here for it for it to get done right and um. On a, and, and have a positive, uh, you know what I mean? Have a positive component to it, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm down for that. Okay, so look, that's uh, here and now. I mean, well, no, that's... Uh, uh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> that's... Uh, I'll put you up on game. I don't really got no announcements right now, except for the same shit, like I said. It's on the way. OBB half a 182A album on the way. Make sure that you guys look out for that. I will be making more announcements. I'm going to pump that. I'm going to shamelessly plug all my shit on my podcast because that's what the fuck we do. And all my folk shit as well. So be on the lookout for that. Look out for Chico Spitz, Circulate album. Both albums on Rebirth Entertainment. Both coming to you this summer. Uh, we're going to be doing a tour that coming up. We're putting it together right now. Something from the Bay. Start out in the Bay. Maybe go to LA and then hopefully we'll take it to Vegas too. So... We're putting together that in the work right now. The company, you know what I mean? The music company part of it is growing. Um, also wanted to make sure that you guys go and follow Rebirth uh, Clothing Co. on Instagram. You can get merch. I'm going to start doing No Invite merch real soon. Make sure that you guys tap in. We got all kinds of stuff from my, from my label. We got label merch and we got actual lines, different stuff for the summer and whatnot. Um, like I said, 182A on the way. OBB half his first official album. My brother's EP, Circulate, on the way, both Rebirth Entertainment 2021. Ask your bitch. Uh, she might know already. She might be on the mailing list. So, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> you know, she might know first, bro. She might know where the spot's at. I mean, you know what I mean? We talking about make doing events and pop ups. She might she be there. She probably got it on pre order. Huh? She probably got it on pre-order. She got it on pre-order. That's not the only thing she got on pre-order. But look, that's neither here nor there. We're not going to get into all that. All we're going to do is we're going to take a quick ass break and we're going to jump in this thing with Jeanette and we're going to talk that talk because this is known by podcast episode 39, season two, The Level Up. The official lineup is here. This is the two starting, but we also have Patty, which is Patty is like, you know what I'm saying? She comes off the bench and then we got my cousin, that guy, he be coming through sometimes too, so... You know what I mean? But this is the starting lineup right here. This is the big two right here. You know what I mean? And the best kept secret place. Bang, bang, bang. We back. Knowing by podcast. Season two, the level up. Episode 39. We got me, Blaze, and the best kept secret in the building. You know, we got Janetti and I had to put you on mic, bro, so we could talk about what you got going on. I know you've been doing the podcast, bro. You've been doing music. You've been, you've been doing video. You've been doing all kinds of... Uh, video content but now you are on the podcast and shit right yeah i'm on a podcast right now but you've now. been doing shit like this though yeah like, i've been doing it, it twisted. i've been doing that but i've been doing music before i did films but i wanted to do podcast before but i never knew the equipment and how to get around it and everything yeah. so and nobody i knew about it really the first person who put me on was it was, was uh you no invite and slideshow yeah yeah and i was like okay well now you know saying yeah. i know people doing it maybe the i can slideshow yeah 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 <laughs> the whole two-hour interview in that hot-ass car. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, um, as crazy as it sounds, though, bro, no no, no shade or nothing, but Sly's been on the podcasting shit for years. Like, I'm talking yes. about since the early 2000s. Really? Yes. Really? Go far about this. He used to work for Wild 107. I've been oh. I've been hearing the Sly show since 2000, right? Yeah. Cold part about it, I didn't know who he was. Cold part about it, nobody know this. Me and him live uh, live up the block from each other. Mm -hmm. Like right now. We live no no at the time. I've been knowing him since '89, and I didn't I didn't you know. I left Pittsburgh in '99, so by the time you know people get older, I didn't really pitch a picture up until we made some spot. He was like, "Oh, yeah. what's up, bro? What's up, bro?" Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Flash, I thought that's you, Flash show. That's you." Like, yeah, man. I'm like, I know his whole family before this shit, so it was like hella weird, like. 
yeah. crazy and shit. Like we did a whole podcast, and it was basically about how we grew up together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, and the thing is, is that he's been on it for. He's been on it. He, he. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna tell him the story. He he knows the story, and if y'all y'all know his story, then whatever. But he he's been doing it for a long time, and we did a lot of content with him. You know what I'm saying? Starting uh-huh. off, you know, when we first iterations of knowing by podcast. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, bro. Podcasting is the new. You know, it's the new, it's the final, it's not the final frontier, but it's that new shit. You feel me? Yeah, cause when I first got on, it was like, I didn't know how to get on. I got, I had equipment, everything, didn't know how to work it. I had Google something, and it was like, show me a site that I can use my phone, or whatever. And I was with the wife one time, and she was like, she don't want to be, she like to do stuff, but she don't want to be seen. So I'm like, podcast is going to be a great thing. So we was like, what you want to talk about? I said, all day long, you walk around the house talking about, yeah, in real life, I do this in real life. And I said, that's what we going to name it, motherfucker, in real life podcast. In real life, huh? Yeah. So we hopped on that shit. First one was talking about the, uh, that was when the uh, verse with Jeezy and uh and Gucci. We talk about that shit. Then we talk about shit with strippers, you know? You feel like you and your, your partner can go to the strip club and be cool? Or she going to allow that? Or you going to allow that? Yeah. She don't really like it. I don't like it because I don't like giving women no money and not getting nothing back for return. Cheap ass. No, no, cheap ass. It's just nah. He's just an investor. Come on, that's a big tease. That's that's just that's expensive tease. That's what you call a a a a, a shrewd businessman. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful what you invest your dollars in. Do you or do y'all not say that? You got to be careful what you invest your money in, right? That is very true. <laughs> I mean, shit, if I was throwing that ass in a circle for me to get some strange for some change, you would be cheap to me. Now, also, I have another right? thing. And, and you know what? There's two sides to every story, though. so I agree with that you totally. Have what? I, have a, I have another thing against strippers also, but I feel their pain, but I had to go through it because, like I said, before the podcast, I was in the music game. So I yeah. feel I was looking for, you know, a music game. And that's those, that's the they that's the male equivalent yeah. of stripping out here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They won't. <laughs> we you trying know. to get it too. We trying to give you this music. What's happening? You know what I mean? We just trying to give you a little rhythm and shit. Can we can we get paid? No. Get dissed. Get nah, treated it was, bad. It wasn't, it wasn't even that part. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a visual part. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I need people for girls to get in the videos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of girls, I don't want to get on. I don't want to get on. I said, well, you strip club. And you know, I go to strip club. I find a few girls who they already, you know, getting down like get that. Busy. Yeah. But they, I, found, we, I found out though that. They don't really deal with the colored people like that because oh, because of no. bad shit that happened. The they reputation that we no 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 reputation is we pimps. They're so we pimps coming in there like pimping. Yeah. Always, yeah. Oh, and if they don't uh y'all don't tip well. That's the other. That's the other stereotype. Well, there. Uh, well, well, see, that's the thing. That's yeah, that's why well. that you know what. Uh, unfortunately, though, that's that's the thing. It's like, um, you know, like. They like the look, they like the sound, they like the style, but they don't like everything else that comes along with it. And it ain't always... And the thing is, it's a stereotype, so it ain't all like that. Like, everything ain't like that, you know what I'm saying? It's like... But they look, they look, that's how they look at us. Like, yo, what the fuck? But also, I feel like there's hella niggas right now. Like, I'm not saying you specifically. There's hella niggas that'll want you in a video. And they they will have a budget. And you don't want to pay me shit. You don't want to give me no, I don't do none of that. I pay everything. Anybody that, that that does something, you know what I mean? Unless it's a mutual, we already worked it out where it's a mutual um, uh, exchange of, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, bartering. Something right. I do for you, you do for me, whatever, and, and it's mutually beneficial, then, yeah, but no, nah, I, I mean, it's business at the end of the day. I'm not trying to fuck none of these girls, so it's like... That's what, that's what I, I, I felt. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of stereotype... I had to go there because I had done a job down the street in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, what else did was like down there from Broadway. I had a white friend. We were cool. He would go there all the time. Yeah. Stereotype, white man spend that money. So yeah. I go in there, him, free, because he spend that money. I said, white boy, okay, can, can you uh, holler at her for me? Yeah. Then that's the reason they come back to me because he gave the word. He was more approachable, right? Yeah. Or, or more, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they, It's a stereotype, once again. Yeah. Once again, they're looking at him and they automatically assume that he's safer, yeah, that he's yeah. safer, or that he's gonna pay, and they don't even realize what. Like, no, you're right, bro. I, I totally get what you're saying because I've been, I've, I have been in situations like that, and it's funny because um, when I approach, you know, I mean potential models to be in the videos, I tell them the same thing. I, like, I come professional, I, you know, I ask them, you know, what, what I, I tell them what the job is, I tell them what my budget is. Then they tell me what, you know, usually how it goes, they counter offer and we meet somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? But um, 
No, most definitely. I get a lot of it just from the just from the gate. Like they they put you in a in a box. Like oh no, nah, like you nah. I don't do those type of events. That but then you see them doing those type of events. Yeah. Or you see them doing that type of shit. It's like it's like what what why what what made me different than anybody else? My money green. I came I came for business. You know what I'm saying? But you know that's just that's just a part of the game and shit though. And um, so with the podcasting and everything that that you're going and you're going full force now, um, what do you feel like uh, podcasts? What do you think the, the value of a podcast is nowadays? Value of podcast is, is, is a new way. I mean, everything you do is like, they get the news from like, I just seen uh, something happen on NBA. And it said uh, Kevin Durant did this, or he's Kevin Durant said this on the, on the podcast. It was the same when Russell Westbrook happened. And he said, why you mention uh, Russell Westbrook? And he said, well, I heard it from the What's Coming podcast. Like, we ain't going to CNN no more. No, we ain't going to Fox know. News no more. You no. can take it from the podcast and... And that's truth. It's the it's the it's the uh the new the new news the new news news. media yeah. the new media yeah no I feel you because people like I said we, people are tired of the right and left shit they want to hear somebody that's real just like them they uh hopefully they're responsible enough to at least be educated about what they're talking about and then if they're not at least be responsible and let people know we're not but at the end of the day no matter what people listen to they gotta fucking they gotta understand like we said use your common sense you know what I mean. Common sense, common sense ain't common, common, but you know what? That's what podcasts are here for. We came here to save, save the day. You feel me? We came here to be the example. You know what I mean? Because really, when you think about it, you listen to podcasts for what? For somebody else's perspective. For someone to give you a look of what you're looking at from a different angle mm-hmm. to make sure that you're not missing something. Or maybe you didn't even think of it like that. Because we're all in more or less, we're all products of our environment. Yeah. And even though the, the, there's, there's a, uh, the world is now the age of information and it's global... There's still a lot of things that we don't know within our own communities to begin with. So our state of mind is kind of like created based on our surroundings, obviously, and, you know, our desires. So for people to like get a podcast, like to me, I, I, I bullshit you not. I learned so much shit on podcasts that helped me make and develop my podcast that it's like I know firsthand that, that, that the possibilities and what good they're for because right. now it's like same thing with YouTube I'm, I'm upgrading equipment I bought some new gear I don't know how to fucking I mean I get the concept of it right but I didn't know exactly how to connect it so I go on YouTube I'm looking at three different fucking YouTube videos about different motherfuckers connecting the same component that I'm trying to add to my studio and I'm like yo just that alone to, to be able to get the knowledge straight it's like you go to a fucking website for a, what's it called you gotta call somebody and talk to them and be like this is specifically what's wrong with my shit how can you help me now you could go age information go to a podcast a business segment or a business podcast whatever the case you like gossip you wanna hear some real shit or whatever the case might be some gangster stories you go to podcast now because you get it directly a lot of the times if you catch them early you get the purest form where they say what they want a lot of podcasts when they start getting bigger sponsors and stuff they start kind of cleaning up their act more or less watering but for yeah watering it down there's a couple podcasts out there that I've, 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 I've listened to since starting and to where they're at now and I don't listen to them as much because of that but I mean, it is what it is. It's like you got to find a happy balance. You know what I mean? You got to understand what kind of, uh, what you're trying to sacrifice to get to the next level. Because it's all going to sacrifice something. Right. Until we own our own entities that could provide these things and put them out for us, we got we to gotta play ball. But you got to also like get, get the cheat codes and tuck them so you could like, ah, ah, when the time right. is right... Come with your own shit. Come Sweet. with your own podcasting network. Come with your own this. Come with your own that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how I feel it. That's why I do a podcast in real life, and I just bring on people. I talk about all t- all topics, all subjects. It don't even matter. Like I said, we doing music. We doing strippers. We doing child support. We doing biblical. We doing football. It's like we're bringing it all at and once. It's real. Real. It's, it's real. It's as real as anything else. I don't give a fuck what anybody sells, bro. Because podcasts, you're getting it from real people that are just like you. Different perspective, real conversation, what's really on their heart. Yeah. They're not worried about you getting you the way I like to think of podcasts is it's like I'm listening into somebody's conversation. I'm a part of the conversation, but I'm just sitting there soaking it up as they go back and forth and talk about this, talk about that, and hopefully I learn something from it. You know, if it's if it's worthwhile, you know, you could probably learn something from it. But yeah, no, that's dope, bro. That's dope. So so what's next for the podcast for Genetti in real life? Like I know you said you were talking about expanding. Yeah, I'm it's about expanding a little group of my people who's seeing me doing it. Uh, I got a few people I ain't gonna lie It's, it's kind of shocking to me But at the same time Way I'm doing it Like 
that, that, that I didn't inspire people to do their own podcast. Like, well, yeah. I said, you're doing it. Yeah. I got a hot ball. Hey, man, we do one together. Yeah. So I'm going to just do that. You should, but bro. But then branch off of that. I'm going to still keep mine going because, uh, you know, a few of them, I don't know if they dedicated, you know, feel like yeah, that. So yeah. I'm like, I like like my first one. I'm like, where I got to go right now? I speak the truth and I say the truth and everything. So the truth is, my podcast is supposed to be me and my wife. Yeah, but yeah, But she didn't want to get sure. on, so I had to move on. And yeah, I just, you got to keep it running, man. There's, yeah. a, there's a, the motto, the motto, um, the motto for rebirth, one of the thing, the mantras or whatever you want to call it is basically, we might slow down, but we never stop. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Whether we slowing down or we full 100 miles per hour, we're moving. Yeah. Like they say in business, say if your business ain't growing, it's dying. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. Is you keep the you keep Janetti in real life. You could do another podcast right now behind the scenes. I was talking to Ann. She might kick off her own fucking yeah. podcast. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, and 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 you know what I mean? I'll probably produce the shit. So you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like you're driving. You're green and yellow. You never red. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck that. You know, no brakes. When they say no brakes, <laughs> we mean no brakes, yo. You know what I'm saying? We might coast. We might let off the gas a while back just to you know what I mean and slow down. But we're not stopping though. That's for sure. And and that's why I always keep a lot of things. You know, you see me, you see how I move. Bro. I always keep something going on. Yeah. And it ain't just one thing. It's the clothing, the podcast. The music, the management, all the other shit that I do because I know that as long as I got more than one hand in the pot, some one of them's gonna pull something out. Yeah. You do know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out when work, you sleep because I see you all there. around. Yep. <laughs> passive. I like passive streams of income on top of whatever the fuck else I'm doing. You, know what <laughs> you mean? gotta make money when you sleep. If you don't make money yeah. when you sleep, you're not making money. Yeah. yeah. Period. That's real, that's real talk, and that's what I like also about the podcasting. So since we started doing it, it's starting to pick up. And I know I was missing an element, and we got the element now. We got Patty. She's my. It's like it's like look. I'm really I'm really the brutally honest, the really brash. I'm going to just say what the fuck's on my mind type of person. Now, I tone it down because I can't be that person really and, and, and maintain the fucking podcast because I'd be having outbursts and, 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 and I don't have Tourette's or nothing. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with that shit. That's why the format helps to bring us back home, right? right. But, um, you know, what I needed was a strong uh, female force. Um, I, already got the, I already got the producer, my, my producer, Patty. She's killing it with that. And um, then, you know, we needed to step our, our mic game up. So we finna have panels. We finna do that. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I, I, I salute you on that part because on my podcast, someone you, back and forth, back and forth. And I see you doing all that. I had one with the wife and she had to take a bathroom break. And I was like, uh, uh, we'll be back in one moment. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like you didn't know what to expect. Like, like, expect, like yeah. Yo, like, yo. No, and, and you know what, though? And, and that's the thing, like, you know. When we started off in season one of this iteration of No Invite Podcast, I had a co-host named Steph, loyal co-host. She used to drive fucking like an hour every week, once a week, just to come do it. So it's two hours really, an hour here, an hour back, yeah. right? She used to come out and do it, and we did it for a minute. We rock, I think we rocked like 30, 40 shows almost, right, together, right, consecutive every week. And she had some personal shit she had to take care of. She had to, she had to go on about her business, right? So it was on me by myself. See, the thing about it is like this. Like I said, although I'm comfortable in front of the mic, this is not my preferred spot to be in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I know how I, I make music. That's different. But like to be the, the, the person conversating and keeping the fucking conversation going and shit, that shit really was never my intention. But it just so happened that's what it was. I really all he wanted to be is just comic relief and talk my shit. You know, because I, I, I know how deep life is and I just don't fucking, you know, let it. I, I don't, you know what I mean? I keep a carefree spirit, you know what I'm saying? So, anyways, long story short, Patty, she stepped up. She super shy, super recluse. I barely had I had to talk her into doing the the the, the producing of the podcast. Uh-huh. She stepped into that when when Steph left and had to handle her business. Patty stepped in and was like, "Okay, well, I'll come in because at that point she's commentating already from the side, mm-hmm. so she's comfortable." She's I'll come in and fill in, but I don't want to be a permanent person. And me, I don't like doing podcasts by myself because it feel like a rant. Yeah. It feel like I'm just ranting about shit. It's like y'all could go to Instagram and see that shit if you want to. You right. feel me? So um, I always liked having people. I'm, I do better. I feel like when I have conversation in front of me because if not, I just don't feel like I, I just cut it off. Be like, all right, ten minutes in, we out. But um, <laughs> you know what I mean. So um, but even if you got to keep your, it rolling. Your intent, I feel like it's definitely your calling. You're good at it. I don't know. I don't Naturally, know if this. You're good at it. I don't know if this is my calling, but it could be. You never know. I, I am comfortable, like I said, with it. And um, also know that 
I'm also smart enough to know that, you know, in order to grow, you, you know, sometimes shit got to change. So that's why we, I finally said, you know what, enough's enough. Patty is always going to be there. She's a producer, but she's also going to be a rotating host on the show because she's just a part of it, right? But now I got Ann in the building, and she's the perm. She's going to be in here permanent doing what the fuck she do, and we're going to try to build from here on out because, like I said, the people have spoken. They, they like the episodes where I have a co-host, and not only just a co-host, a steady co-host. They want to get to know you. You feel me? Yeah. I'm sure you've been told that, too. Like, people that listen to your podcast, I'll let you just like, yo, they get to know who you are through your podcast, more or less. Maybe they didn't really know you that well in person or know of you, but when they hear the podcast, they get to see a different side of you. Yeah, all different side of me, you know, bringing a real. Mm-hmm. I always bring a partner, I talk about whatever. Mm-hmm. I even let the partner just whoever I want to free fall. You want to come on and speak your truth? Yeah, you know, bring it out, let it go. Yeah, go let ahead. Let it go. Yeah. Right. I yeah. ain't mad at you. The podcasting thing is real. It's definitely something that... Um, it's shit therapeutic, man. It is. It's therapeutic. It's therapeutic. It is. It, it, it very much is, bro, because... Um, I don't know. It's just like how they say you got to get it out your system. Sometimes the best way to get it out is just put it in words. You know what I'm saying? Just like music for me is therapeutic. You know what I'm saying? Or fucking, you know, some people exercise is therapeutic. You know what I mean? It's just because they, it, it's a it's a way to just let off some steam. You know what I mean? And and, and it ain't a bad way. I mean, shit. Yeah, so and I'm, I'm a curious motherfucker too. So I just be wanting to know other people feel that way. Yeah. So I got I got some topic in my mind, but I want to talk about it. Yeah. So I might ask somebody else. Yeah, and, and and it's the perspective, bro. Like. You know, humans, that's how we are. We're communal people. So we fucking, it's always been like where, you know, people share stories, share ideas, share their, their pain with, 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 with their sisters, their brothers, their fucking a stranger, whatever, their girlfriend, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? So it's just how we built. I think it's just how we wired. That's why podcasting is so, uh, so good and so popping right now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like at the end of the day, people are tired of the mainstream shit. They want to hear somebody real. They want to hear somebody that they feel like they know what they talking about. And if they don't, at least they admit that they don't know what the fuck they talking about. Something just... Give you something to do when you're on the go. Most yeah. people is like, they're not sitting still to watch TV. A lot mm-hmm. of people don't even subscribe to cable no more. That's I don't. That's smart TV. I don't. So podcasting give them the opportunity to still get this information or have some form of entertainment. Yeah. But I'm in route to the gym, I'm in route to work, I'm dropping off the kids, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I can still have that information. Listen to it. Yeah. You wanna know what's funny? Nah, nah, I don't know if y'all got this situation, but I know now, like, when I was younger and I had, like, an uncle or maybe an older person from my neighborhood that always listened to talk radio. Mm-hmm. And we'd be like, what the fuck? Like, like that shit's yeah, fucking lame. That? Like, like we'd be like listening to music all day. And like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, I can't picture myself not listening to music all the time, like being a kid, right? And then it's like, now you get it as you get older because it's like, as we get older or just whatever, like the, the way the times are, it's like, we, we, we want perspective more now than we right. do like music is music we appreciate it we know what it do but it's like the podcasting thing is definitely a different lane so okay bro where can they find you you can find me on anything spotify apple podcast anywhere you get your your podcast spell from. it out for it's him bro Jeanette, in real life podcast Jeanette, j-a-n-e-n-t-i n-i-n real r-e-a-l podcast hell yeah and that's a PSA right there for all you slow motherfuckers like we looking out for y'all too like I'm you ain't gotta admit if you can't read or or, or, or really spell right he oh, spelled it for you I was told I didn't spell Janetti in real life podcast you know you forgot to spell life I felt like I mean y'all get it I I mean I got it I I get it so look like I said Janetti in real life podcast y'all can find him on all streaming platforms uh, do you drop weekly, monthly, how, what, bi-weekly? How, how's it go? Uh, I tried to drop weekly. I had some going on. I don't really want to get into uh, what we do, but uh, I had some going on. It didn't work out right where I had to go somewhere else, so I'm trying to get back on myself. Uh, We're going to get you back real yeah, quick. Yeah, recently, life happens. Uh, as, as it always does. As down. So uh, in April, I got married. Okay, recently. congratulations, yeah. of course. And then, uh, we're gonna put some applause there, don't you? Yeah, and then, uh, and then May, I found out I'm having my first kid. So, okay. I feel like, okay, yeah, cool. And then in June, I found out I'm having twins. Oh, so, like, shit. Yeah, every month, so it's not a fucking thing. Oh, like, shit. So, I'm hey. scared to fuck what happened in July. Hey, so, let me be the first to say that this is gonna be the last time that he pulls up to the podcast and he doesn't have a gray beard or some kind of gray super facial feature hair thing going on, because, uh, you two kids, bro. That's a blessing, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not. I'm not trying to talk shit. That's a fucking blessing, bro. Hey, we're listening. Talk- we got to sit on diapers. Hit me up. For real, y'all know where to find them at. Oh, oh where can they find you on Instagram? Instagram at Janetti 
underscore N underscore real underscore life podcast. There you go. Make sure that you guys reach out, tap in with him, check out his podcast. Very, very, very well friend of Knowing By Podcast. So we fully endorse this podcast and we fully fuck with him on all levels of the game. You feel yeah, me? Right now I'm 19 deep, so I get to do a full day of work. Yeah. Maybe a day and a That's half. That's the best part. On ain't that the best part <laughs> when you catch part. when you catch a podcast early? And you're able to catch up on it. Like, there's a podcast called Tax Season. Uh-huh. It is. I think he only had like two or three seasons, but that motherfucker is so fucking funny. You got to check it out. He's he in jail right now. Yeah, he's in jail. Right That's yeah, that yeah, dude, yeah, Tax yeah, Stone. Yeah, yeah, but his podcast is yeah, fucking yeah. hilarious. That's why right? I feel about George, because I work 12-hour shifts. So I feel like what I ain't, what I ain't caught up on, I can go back and catch up on some shit. Man, I'm the same fucking way. I, I keep like six, seven podcasts on my rotation every week that I uh-huh. listen to. Because, you know... Everybody drops, and maybe some people only drop once, once a, you know, what I mean, once a week. So, you gotta have a few. If you really listen to yeah. podcasts, and like yeah. me, same yeah. thing. I work, I go to work. I put my headphones on. Fuck everybody. Don't talk to me. I, I'm doing my job, and I zone out, and I listen to podcasts all day, and I listen to music, and I listen to documentaries. Uh, I like. I'm getting into audible books too, and shit like that. I like that shit a lot too. I think that's just cool. But um, yeah, no. Yeah, I'm, pod- I'm a sports fanatic, so everything every day is sports. Yeah. So I can. Give my at least two hours in on sports. I do sports for Y'all sure. Got me feeling hella bad. Why? Because the <laughs> because the podcasts I listen to clearly are out of line. Why? Well, what, 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 I do listen line? to I do listen to a lot of stuff. Like um, there's one girl named Kezi. Uh-huh. I definitely listen to her, and she is. Um, What's your podcast? What podcast do you listen to? You ain't. Well, I guarantee they. So my friend just like? sent me to it. What podcast you like? It's called Horrible Decisions. But I, I used to listen four. to that one. Yeah, Horrible. Yeah, yeah. I like them. I like, I like a lot of sex what's, talk. What's that one? Okay, do you, do you listen to Live Service? Yeah, Live Service. I, I listen to Live Service. Uh, I, I listen, listen to them all the time. Yeah. Only because I feel like... Yeah, it's it's, it's real. Something. Well, not only is it real, but also it'd be like, damn, why did this happen to me? And then you'd be like, oh, okay, so that happened to a lot of people. Okay, so it's not just me. It's yeah. not an issue. Okay. I just like I just like listening to them talk about giving head and shit. I feel like that shit's like fire right there. Mm-hmm. Like, but like but, because it's because no, but it's educational though, because they also tell you like uh like they ain't nowhere else you could go and actually get what a woman says and what she likes and don't like. Like they'll let it be known and they'll, they'll and like right. shit that guys probably didn't fucking know about. Like, yo, I didn't know that pissed girls off. Like I thought that shit was cool. Like you'll learn that that no, shit probably ain't the lit. Like, that's the reason why I like And that doesn't mean you're gonna stop doing it. That just means that no, at least wait, you know, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I'm just like, kidding. Like, 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 I mean some motherfuckers like, never learn. I'm not talking for me, I'm just saying some motherfuckers don't no, never learn. No, like there was a um they talked on one episode. I don't know if it was horrible decisions though, but it was one that I was listening to, and um, also listened to Passport Cousin. That she. Uh, I heard. Crazy. I heard of that one, but I never listened to. I it. love Passport Cousin, yeah. but one of the ones that I was listening to, they was talking about how guys think that it's super like dope to like put alcohol, like have it run down the stomach and run down like the vagina, but. For a woman, it's like... Burn, baby, burn. Yeah, it burn is back. That shit don't, <laughs> I don't know why guys feel like that shit wouldn't burn them too, though. Like, yeah. it's like, bro, that shit don't feel good on Man, nobody. Like, people still try it, and the only thing I was <laughs> Motherfuckers watching too many romantic movies yeah. and shit, yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Fucking, like, fucking lover boys. Yeah, the podcast bring back life, you know? Like, what like, podcast like, you listen to? My, well, my, my, I give my top top five Give podcast. me your top five. Top five. It, no Invite, Fly Show. Okay, I like that. Drink Champs, Undisputed. And uh, 85 South. I fuck with you. Hey, 85 South is hella funny. Hilarious. But what? I do listen to Lip Service, 85 South. I listen to, definitely listen to No Invite. <laughs> um, I also listen I'm to... Have, don't trip, I'm going to have more sound effects. <laughs> horrible Decisions. Um, and then there's another one. Uh, it's Kezi. I don't know exactly what her... The reason why I ask because I want I, you know I'm I'm interested in you know new I'll, I'm always willing to give a podcast to try you feel me and see right. if I like it. I also like well, Joe, Joe Budden too because we all know music too. Yeah, yeah, I like I like music based podcasts yeah, where they yeah. know shit like that. Yeah. So I'll give you my top like whatever you feel me. Let me know when you figure out the name of that by the way. But um, I, I go with of course I listen to my shit every day and it's because I'm an egomaniac and also because I like critique myself and yeah. figure out like what works and what doesn't. I'm why you know pay attention to my shit. So, but that's not, I'm not even going to count that. I listen to PFT podcast with Mike Florio. That's my sports fix. My 49ers podcast, you know what I'm saying? Because I fuck with, that's my team. So it is what it is. Me in this room right now. Yeah, I'm just saying though. You know what I mean? I, in case you didn't see, you should read the room. I see, you know I what see. I'm saying? I don't want to tell you that. my team. I might get kicked out. You want to tell you nah, my team. Nah, it's cool. I, I saw love now. I mean, if you ain't in Cali, it don't really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
You know, it, it's different now. Now we just good cousins and shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm fucking talking shit though. But uh, um, no, for sure. So Mike Florio, I do my little. That's my sports. I do Undisputed too because I think uh, Skip and Shannon are hilarious. Uh, I listen to The Breakfast Club. I listen to Lip Service. I listen to Bully and the Beast, which you should listen to. I love them. I listen oh to God, Bully I'm and so the Beast. Sad when he actually, I listen when I to. Brilliant idiot. So she like wax. Oh shit. Wax okay. is elephant. Wax is oh, hilarious. Brilliant idiots. Brilliant idiots is good too. I listen to um what else? Shit. I, I got like I said, oh I, I listen to the funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you hands down right now. If you guys don't listen to any of these podcast recommendations, you have to look up Bodega Boys, Jesus and Merrill podcast. It's fucking Disgusting, hilarious. They're on bro. Showtime too, right? They're on Showtime too, but their podcast is way fucking okay, different. I'm that. Their podcast, that. they're they're just stupid ass ridiculous, bro. So if you don't listen to anything else, I tell you when it comes to the podcast, that one for sure. I listen to Million Dollars Worth of Game. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do watch yeah, yeah. Um, Wallow, Wallow, my nigga. Wallow. I listen to No Jumper. I listen to Drink Champs, and I listen to uh, my homegirls podcast, Vibing Con Las Chulas, and I listen to Janetti in real life. Feel me? So those are the podcasts that I rock with that I keep on my thing. If I re- if I could recommend one that both of y'all would like, Bodega Boys. I'm about to get on that right now. It's hilarious, yeah, just, bro. Just, fucking I hilarious. Just, you know what I'm saying? So look, we was gonna do a lot of other segments and we we're gonna do a lot of other shit, but I think we're good right now. Unless you got something for us, and you think we should keep going? I'm gonna let you use your your expertise right now. Your opinion matters to me. You know, I'm always for keeping it going. Okay, so what you got for us? <laughs> okay, so then that that that's what it is. That it so it so it was said and so it shall happen. So okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do right is the format. So we're gonna keep kicking the format with y'all. We're gonna talk about these uh, main topic. Now earlier we talked about um, well earlier we talked about what's it called um, the whole fucking OnlyFans and everything else like that. You know what I'm saying? So. The, the question is now, you know what I mean? OnlyFans might be drying up, but also OnlyFans showed you a lot of more people are down with selling, you know what I'm saying, skin flicks than normal, which I don't judge and I don't I, at all because at the, at the same time, it's whatever, however it is, you got to get it how you live, you know what I mean? You're not hurting yourself. Like I said, if you're not hurting yourself and you're not hurting nobody, I can't tell you nothing about how you live your life. You feel me? Period. So, um, but... Ask me, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say it and a lot of people aren't as as understanding. So, like, the question is, is could you be with somebody that was an X-rated content maker on OnlyFans? Like yes. in a relationship? Yes. Yes. Depending on how much he's acting, how much I benefit from it. If he is stingy, man, I don't want to deal with him anyway, so. But does that mean that, that that you would be okay with them, like, doing content with other females, or it means that you... Oh, no, I don't I'm talking about that. I'm talking about, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, I mean, I you don't know. You do X-rated with me, but you can't do X-rated well, with Well, because, like, like the, 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 I wanted to keep the question broad, because some people, like I said, some people go on OnlyFans and cook pancakes, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm talking about, like, X-rated content, and, you know, like, it not always... It, it ain't always just the person by themselves. You do know what I'm saying? So I feel like we can have an OnlyFans, but I'm a big, like, loyalty is a very big thing for me. And I feel Definitely. like motherfuckers' loyalty is not set up right. And that's part of the reason why I just... But what if he's like, yo, you you could book my shit, you could meet everybody, right? You get to I handle my money. What's going on with her vagina? I can't guarantee about her bacterial right. vaginosis. Right. No. So this ain't gonna work. No. Yeah, because it's a health risk, and it's, it's something that so, it's so, regardless, no matter how safe. It's not even just a health risk. It's also a risk of me having to whip her ass. You know, if you cheat <laughs> on a woman once, right? And let's say the girl loved the way you slinging that dick, then that means she's going to want to come back. She's gonna mm-hmm. slide in your DM. She's gonna do disrespectful shit that's gonna make me have to attack her. So I just feel like we don't even need to be putting me in that situation. But, I don't wanna go to jail but for But what her. if it's like, like I said, like it's business? He's like, yo, you could have my phone, you could check my phone, you could hold it, you could book the sessions, it's you could great. you could handle the money. That's still a problem? Yeah, my feeling okay. didn't change. Well, I'm just asking, you know what I'm saying? I got <laughs> to play devil's advocate, so, so I knew your stance. I had to go the but other way to make sure, you know what I'm saying? I think it's because in all honesty, <laughs> men operate from a different perspective. So I feel like, and not all women, I won't say all, 
But like some of us women, I have no problem with fucking a man and then never calling him again and blocking his number because I don't want to talk to you no more. Because I know how to detach it. Yeah, yeah. Some women do not. And even if she wow. is in the industry, so let's say this is her profession, women are still more emotional than men. So if you catch that one person where he give her one good shoot up, boo up, and she love it and she get to acting up, it's going to be a problem. I get it. I hear you. I hear you. I'm just, you know, I'm ra- I'm just raising the question, you know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just trying to uh what do they call it? Uh give reasonable doubt, you dig, you know what I'm saying? It ain't a it ain't a court of law, but it's a court of all, you feel me? So um no, I get it. I, I don't to be honest with you, I don't think I could neither. You know what I mean? Just because um at, at the same time, uh I'm not saying I couldn't, but I couldn't take them seriously, put it that way. Yeah, no. Like, you know what I mean? It would be like if, if uh, hypothetically, if I was in a relationship with somebody or uh, I, I I found out that they were doing, that's what they were doing, I don't think, it, it would definitely be like a time bomb, you know what I'm saying? It'd be a time when it expires, you feel what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm not knocking, the, and, and see, you know what, other people are different, so I'm not judging nobody. Like I said, to me, I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with it if you're doing it. Like I said, if you're not hurting nobody and you're not hurting yourself, then more power to you, you feel me? And I, and I definitely never knock the hustle, but... For me personally, my preference, I couldn't do that because, um, well, it, it, it depends on the situation. Like I said, if, I, if I'm with somebody and she's talking about, you know, you know, this is her profession from the gate and this is what I want to do. Or if she's talking about I want to, you know, be a family or whatever, you know, I mean, it all depends on the circumstances. You do know what I'm saying? But for me, I, don't, I wouldn't see nothing long term uh, with somebody that was content creating as far as like my because it's like. At the end of the day, um, I'm stingy. Facts. I'm and stingy. I'm not, so, so now I'm not saying I'm the only one that had it, but I can't. I can't have everybody seeing somebody else have it. Right. Like you know who saying? wants to be walking up and being like, "Hey, bro, you saw how old boy girl." See, and, then, and, then, and, like, and, and then on the flip side of that, there's motherfuckers that don't care, and I mean, you you're just a. You're just braver than me. That's all I can say. You know, I have nothing negative to say. That, but a lot of those of... are relationships of convenience. The oh, amount of yeah. money, like you know, how much pandemic pay, how much pandemic paper was paying for pussy. Man, like in real life, that, one of my friends is a stripper. She was making money. Like, was she 5, stripping 000... with a mask on? No. Oh shit. Okay, just asking. <laughs> but I'm saying, I mean, like, because like, they can't be chewing and stripping if it all don't come off. But just picture like <laughs> five thousand dollars a night, right? I mean, the shoes could stay on though. And just say you hit Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so three nights a week. I mean, fifteen thousand dollars. The the pandemic. Um, that pandemic. The pandemic seen money. people have a lot of time on their hands, and and, and 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 it's like, come on now, the way they were pumping that shit, and how everybody was getting scared. I mean, nobody was, was wanted to really go out. They were like, fuck it, it's safer. I, jerk, I stay home and jerk off or something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I mean? A lot of people were scared like that. Me, I moved accordingly. I wasn't like super around people, but I moved as I needed to. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm not I'm most definitely. I didn't listen. I, didn't. I mean, I did in the sense that I wore my mask, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. But I truly believe, I don't care what nobody said, I think that the reason why I never caught COVID is because I like my liquor the way I like my men, straight. So I think that drinking the straight liquor as it went down, it was burning the COVID, and it never just happened to me. Because I was, like, going to Vegas. I was on trips. I was at the parties. I was... was This is a PSA to let you guys know that (laughs) that we're in no way saying that alcohol cures COVID. You know what I'm saying? But we But what we are saying is that it does definitely help. I mean, it helps dealing with the shit. Because, you know, even then, like, they even said there was a study and they said that um, people, like, were having... There was people having uh, dem- uh, separation and domestic issues and alcohol-based issues more during the pandemic, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just saying... Because they're stuck in the house. Dealing- like, I feel like a lot of people realize they were in relationships of convenience. Like... Yeah. Because now you're stuck in the house with this motherfucker and you realize, I don't even like you. I don't like you. Like... It was cool when we were busy. It's and it was cool when we were single. busy and we see each other here and there and this shit like that. Now it's like, uh. yeah, like you go to work in the day, I go to work at night. But now we sitting in the house three, four, five, now it's six like, months. Now it's like, man, fuck that. I'm watching this shit. I don't want to watch that stupid ass shit and on TV. And a lot of people realize how bad <laughs> they fucking kids are too. Hey, you know what though? No, you know what? A lot of people realized if they didn't, they realized that how lucky they are that they have a, a basically a place to send their kids every day because. Right. The kids obviously they they need education, but also that that these these parents 
and us, we all need a little break to, to be able to do our basic everyday functions to provide for the house. If we have our kids everywhere, we can't go handle our business. You ready for that? No, ready. Are you ready for two of them? <laughs> one one tugging on each side of your beard and shit? They're going to be like this. Dad. They're going to be like that. But, uh, Dad. I got a good wife, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Speaking on that, you said a lot of divorce. Yeah. I, I got married in the pandemic. Oh, yeah, see, see and see that thing. that's another thing though that we gotta say people that too. People realize that they actually genuinely love somebody. Real Plus, talk. there were so many people like dying that it just truly made you realize what's important, what means yeah, the most. Yeah, like to value relationships. Like I don't think I value relationships as much as I do now. I'm a horrible friend. I won't fucking keep super in contact all the time, but I am there if you ever need me, and right. and I don't just show up when I need something. So you right. know what I'm saying. So I'm that kind of friend. I'm a horrible friend, though. Horrible my friend called friend. me. It it, it, it kind of did because, like, I, I ain't seen my partner. I ran into him to a grocery store, like, two months ago. I ain't seen him in about a year or so. And and he used to be, like, my my, my inner circle. You feel me? And we, it ain't no bad, nothing with us, right? But, you know, life carries you in different directions. You got to handle business. You know, I went and had my travels and my vacations and shit like that. So, um you know, I see him at the grocery store. I'm like, he's like, what's up, bro? I'm like, shit, man, holla, I'm going to holla at you. You know, I should really be keeping in more touch with you. You feel me? Like, your whole family, how's everybody doing? So I had his number. He gave me his number. I got his, right? One day, I don't know where I'm at work. This is like two months later, two and a half months later. He goes, hey, he goes, hey bro. He was like, yeah, man, I was just looking through my phone. I forgot I had your phone number and shit. What's up? And I'm like, shit, nothing. I'm like the same thing. He goes, I, I, go, I go, I had your phone number in my phone too for a while. I've had it for a minute. It's the same one. He's all you had it and you never used it. And I was like, I was like, he goes, why is that? I was like, keep it real, chill. I'm a horrible friend. No, it's because <laughs> the phone go both ways. No, nah, yeah, it does go both ways. And see, that's the thing. If you if you pull if you stay in close contact with me, I'll stay in close contact with okay. you. I'll, I'll holler back, but for the most part, I'm that kind of friend, though. You know what I mean? You know what? I I will say I am the friend that will randomly check on people. Don't do that. <laughs> I do randomly check on my friends. I, I do too. But some of my friends, out of respect for whatever their circumstances is, is just better than not. If I see you on well, social media, we cool. Well, that's the well, that's the thing about being a friend. You gotta understand the situation and where it's where it's at at the moment. Like you, you know, some friends sometimes you go you go through cycles with your friends where you guys are real close, and then, then things happen, things gotta move around, things gotta adjust. The, you know what I mean? The, the, the world turns upside down and then, you know, you might find yourselves again or you might never find yourselves, like, even speaking like you used to. You feel me? Like I, like I said, even like with my partner. follow what is in alignment with what is in their best interest. If I consider myself your friend, right, and your wife gets offended that I call at 11 o'clock at night because I just thought of something, yeah. I just won't be calling that late. Like, I just feel like if you're really my friend, then you should care about what makes me happy. And if this makes me happy you're right. and you should be in a line and, and that goes both ways because right. what, what 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 might make that friend happy you know what I'm saying might be that and um sometimes we can't control how our um significant other views our friends because I'm sure that there's guy friends that that I that you know what I mean I know my girl does if if they she hears them calling they're like nah they want you to go out and be act stupid or go and go hang out and shit right. like that so it's the same thing like you know what I mean like nah I don't want that it just it's just like when 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 you got a friend like I, I'm I'm gonna say like this it, it doesn't happen with everyone but I'm blessed my girl I I hold, I hold nothing from her she meets whoever I, everybody whoever she wants to and I just let her decide from there if you don't like that person or whatever she don't like that person. She she'll she'll let me know, and what I'll do is she'll understand. It's like okay, well, you don't like them, but ain't nothing really wrong. You got your whatever reasons you got, but that's not gonna stop what the fuck I'm doing. Right. You feel me? I'm still gonna do what I do. It's just a respect thing, you know, whatever. But um, shit, man, you bouncing? Okay, well, shit then. We go home. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back. No invite podcast. We got we burning it up today. Y'all got me fucked up. It's not only really hot in here, but we done then we 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 killing it right now on the podcast. So we'll be back in a minute. You know, by podcast, I promise you, this is the last break. <laughs> Y'all done got like 30, 40 breaks in this motherfucker so far, but it was worth it. It was a dope conversation. We had Janetti in Real Life. Uh, Janetti from Janetti in Real Life Films and uh, Janetti in Real Life Podcast. I, I don't know if I fucking said it right, but he said it already, so rewind that shit if you didn't catch that. But uh, we're here. We got Anne, the best kept secret. You know what I mean? I'm so excited. You know what I mean? The, the Jerry Rice to my Joe Montana, you dig? So, and, and we just trying to shoot it. We, you know what I mean? And I, I, I'm glad that this was um, the first episode 
where we got to introduce you and you actually be on the podcast because now I think kind of like like you're definitely way more comfortable than the last time. <laughs> and, that, and that's the reason why I wanted to do a panel. Right. Because when you're like, it's, you know, when we're doing it, just me and you, it's ping pong. So at one point or another, you, you got the ball, you trying, you know, you holding the ball, you on the spot. But when you got a third person, it helps bring, make it more co- comedy, not comedy, but it makes it more conversation to where you know you're not the focal point. You could kind of let your hair down and be yourself more. You know right. what I'm saying? And I feel like I got that from you this this episode. And that's what I hope that I, uh, we could continue to do because uh, it's official. We have number two. And we're going to be doing a lot more. Uh, we're going to be capable of a lot more coming up. Mm-hmm. So I, I just um, wanted to tell everybody that uh, you can find us on Instagram at no underscore uh, in uh, what the fuck? No yeah. underscore invite underscore podcast. Uh, where can they find you at, Ann? They can find me at um, Anasa underscore opulent underscore aesthetics or my regular page is just at uh, Devalicious underscore ego. And you could also, if that's too much for y'all and you guys are too cool to follow people, and you could also just drop a DM and, and, and um, address it to her on the no invite DMs, you know what I'm saying? And you know, we 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 trying to step our game up, so we're gonna be definitely looking for people, and I want you to make sure that you let everyone know mm-hmm. all you're following that um, we're gonna be looking for, uh, you know, what I mean, people to do do more, to be more active with them. You know what I mean? We're gonna right. have we're gonna have a lot more shit for them to do. We're gonna be a lot more professional in the way we present our uh, content, and it doesn't mean that it's gonna be like watered down. It just means we just gotta we got a goal, we got to aim. So um, you can find us there. You can find us on on YouTube at no. At No Invite Podcast on YouTube, the uh, or you could go look up the channel and find everything at once at Rebirth underscore Media. No, it's Rebirth Media Films with a Z. I'm high as fuck right now, y'all, and it's hot as shit. <laughs> Rebirth Media Films. That's R I B I R T H Media Films with a Z F I L M Z. Uh, you can find us there. Find all the episodes. My intern. Eh, eh. I'm gonna tell you like this. My intern ain't the most consistent person, but. At least they're trying, and sometimes that's more than other people because everybody wants you to do it for them, and then they want to take the credit for it. So I, 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 the intern, he's in, you know, he's learning. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the the we we update we update the YouTube channel weekly. Uh, mm-hmm. You can find us also No Invite Podcast on all your favorite podcasting and streaming podcasting platforms. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, you could also go to Rebirth Clothing Co. on Instagram, the R-I-B-I-R-T-H Clothing Co. And you can find all kinds of merch. I'm going to have some no-invite merch. I'm going to have all kinds of shit, but you can find merch, stuff that you can buy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking y'all to give me money. Instead, I'm asking you to buy something from a small business. Invest. You dig? In- invest in it. It's quality, too, at that. With that being said, we out. Episode 39 in the books. Yes, yes. Oh. 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 Oh.